Let's start with the drama. Mm. The president had barely gotten his first cough in and the EFF had started with disruptions, claiming that security personnel were there to, with, with things like sedatives to usher them out in case anything happens. Uh, was this uh, justified or was this strategy from their side? Yeah, look, it's, I think it's very sad that last night's speech will be remembered more for what happened around the speech and before the speech than actually, you know, in the days before the speech, not only only on the day, um, than the actual speech itself. Um, and that's unfortunate from the president and the ANC side. Um, but really, the speech was in, faded into insignificant. Clearly, there was a problem that had been building up the whole week and the weeks beforehand. There was an issue with the militarization of parliament, the calling in of 441 uh, policemen and, uh, of the army, uh, 6,000 police that were deployed, they were brought in apparently from all over the, the Western Cape and some even from outside of the province. Um, so clearly there was, there was an issue and of course then there was also an issue with the press and I think, you know, never annoy the press because then the press really started exposing some of these things. Look, the is issue of uh, injections and sedatives and stuff, that got a good giggle from the gallery as well. Um, I don't think that really was true. Was there a significant presence because they thought that the EFF was going to disrupt? Yes. And of course it proved to be correct. Um, but I think I, I, I spend a lot of time in Parliament and we've seen a lot of disruptions and I've seen the EFF being thrown out numerous times. Last night took on a slightly different tone and, and it was very worrying and I think very disturbing. Not only from the securitization side of it or the security side of it, but, but also because of the way the EFF clearly went in to, to create problems. They wanted to be thrown out with as much violence as they could. Mm. In their response, the security personnel, um, it was something different than what we've seen mm. in, in the past, although we've come to expect these disruptions from the EFF. You were there. Give us a sense of how many uh, police were there, how many security people were there. Did you get a sense that there were army members in, in the parliament precinct? I mean, you were very aware from just outside Parliament, so from Ruland Street onwards, sort of this cordon, you were very aware. And that has significantly more. I live very close to Parliament, so I see that every year. And of course, I've been in Parliament. This was something else, you know, concrete barricades in, in Ruland Street and things like that, which has never been there before. There's been barricades, but not the concrete ones. Um, and there were police everywhere, from on the Val Drive, everywhere. So definitely um, there was a significant heightened presence outside of Parliament, inside of Parliament also, um, but inside the chamber itself, it struck me that on the gallery just how many security people there were, both in uniform and, and in white shirts, but you could see that they were security. It was, you know, at some of the doors I counted, it looked like there were about 10 security personnel of different versions of them um, on the gallery at every single door, and there's quite a couple of doors. And then there was some sitting amongst us, and then when trouble started, they all got up and, and suddenly mobilized, which, you know, was a bit worrying. And of course, the irony of it all was, Despite all of that, then some people get up on the gallery, they leave, and they leave some um, pepper spray canister behind, which causes havoc. Mm. Um, a lot was made beforehand about the soldiers being deployed, and the defense minister afterwards insisted that this was based on intelligence. But what do we make of this militar militarization, as you say, of parliament? Well, look, I mean, there is still no reason for the army to be there for the military, um, even if they have good intelligence, then they should use the police. That is what the police are trained for and, and that's why we have special units in the police to deal with, with crowd orders and so on. The army is not trained to do that. The army is trained to fight and to defend and to, to shoot, basically. And, and thus, this is not the correct way of going about it. Um, secondly, I mean, the threat was always coming from inside of Parliament. It was, it was sure there was going to be protest march and so on, but we have them all the time, especially in Cape Town. So they should be more than competent, the police and, and the local riot people, to handle that. The, the threat was always coming for the ANC from this disruption inside. It was important to the presiding officers to not let that happen again. Um, remember the last time President Zuma was in Parliament was in September of last year when he answered questions the last time. And he was furious at the end. Remember he turned to the Speaker and said, you have to get your house in order. Every time I come here, I get insulted, I get disrespected, I don't want to do this anymore. And so it was very important for them to show that they could manage that. Together with that, then there clearly was from the other ministries in the security cluster, this anxiety that things could go badly wrong, not helped by the fact that the ANC organized a big rally on the parade, which could potentially have gone very wrong. 
In my, way, my view, it was absolutely a show of force by the ANC to show, look, we're still in control. Despite everything else, we need to show you. And apart from then the show of force, it was an attempt also to control what was going to happen in Parliament. And of course, in terms of that, it failed.